Hello everyone, in this video we're taking a look at train splitters. A train splitter is a device to evenly distribute trains among multiple output tracks. Now we don't necessarily need to use logic to do that, but let's take a look at some examples where we can. So here's the first of two examples. This is a FURS industry replacement set game, which has uh, an interesting game mechanic. So in this game, if we look at a primary industry, we can see if we deliver it 300 crates of engineering supplies, it will have boosted production for three months. Now over here, I have a logic-based logic train splitter, and you can see that trains come in from the right and there are five different output, uh, output paths, each with a waiting bay. So when this, over here, we have a timer, when this timer passes uh, that point on the track, it will release all five trains. Now each of these trains contains three, uh, 320 crates of engineering supplies, so that will boost production on five different primary industries. And the timer is set up to run about every 2.5 months. So this system makes sure that all those five primary industries are always have always have boosted production. Now this is one of the devices we will be learning how to make today. Here's the other example. This is a Yeti Extended Towns and Industries game. So Yeti, to maximize your industry production, you need to divide certain types of cargoes among multiple uh, industries, in this case food. So we have our food plan over here and our food pickup right here. And over on the exit, we have this logic splitter. So unlike the previous example, this one does not force trains to wait. Instead, trains can even uh, can just freely go through, but there's only one specific path that each train can take, and it will cycle between the three different paths based on this counter over here. Now you'll also notice that the tracks recombine right after the splitter, so it doesn't really look like it's doing anything. But actually, these are a special type of train, uh, and the train's maximum speed is changed by the color of the track, and then on the train are conditional orders that uh, determine the destination based on maximum speed. So a little bit convoluted, but it works for perfectly dividing that food among these three different industries, clay, forest, and stone. Now for the tutorial. As you can see here, we have our little test bed and it'll be our goal to evenly divide trains amongst the two tracks here, two or more. Now, as you can see, even though we haven't done anything yet, the trains are evenly dividing themselves among the two tracks. And even if we add a third track straight down the middle, we'll see that the trains still actually divide themselves pretty evenly among the three tracks. And that's because the train pathfinder is pretty smart. Trains will try to avoid tracks that already have a train on them. Um, so you can see the middle, the middle path is preferred a little bit more than the other two. But depending on your situation, you really might not need a logic-based train splitter. Just letting the train pathfinder do its work could be good enough. So to make the trains want to go down these paths unevenly, we can add some pathfinder penalties. So some backwards uh, two-way path signals will do. And the train pathfinder doesn't like going through backwards two-way path signals. So you can see now that trains will start to prefer the right path a lot more. Looks like we could use a few more of them though. And now if we speed that up, we can see now every train's taking the right path. So now our goal is going to be to evenly divide them. And a quick note, we will need two-way EOL for this. So to turn that on, hit the tilde on the top left of your keyboard, type in this command, and this will just set it up so that the pathfinder really doesn't like red two-way block signals. So that's useful for forcing trains to go a certain way. So these designs are going to go from simple to complex, and here we have the simplest design, and it is a random design. The idea is that when a train approaches, depending on whether this logic train is in the left or right position, the train will be forced the other direction. So it's completely random, and also it just doesn't work very well. If we speed it up, we can see that trains aren't really divided that evenly, um, but it is a very simple design, so that's why it's first. Now we could expand this to three or more output tracks pretty easily if you imagine we would just need to expand this uh, this logic train, give it a loop to ride on, so it could have more than two different positions to stop in. Anyway, let's continue on to the real logic-based designs. 
All right, let's build the third design, excuse me, the second design. So this is what I call the blocking NAND gate design, and it's actually the uh, first design I showed in this video, as well as the first logic device I showed in this whole series. So what we will need to do, what we will need to do is count out waiting bays. So our trains are length three. I marked them out with these um, entry signals, which we'll, we will need, and add some bridges here to carry that signal. Then we can just add some signals here to pass along. Then the other half of this design is to detect that trains are in every single waiting bay. So we can add some tracks to detect for trains like so. And then add a not gate. So these three signals here form an AND gate, and we'll build a NOT gate here, and that'll be an AND gate, and that's where I got the name from. All right, and the last thing we'll need, well, this isn't connected, but the last thing we'll need is to uh, deal with this entrance. As you can see, the tr this train went the wrong way. So we'll need our two-way exit signals there. And I'll force this train through so we can clear up that waiting bay. And now, as we see, when three trains fill up the waiting bays, the knock gate triggers and all three are released simultaneously. So this will perfectly divide the trains three ways. However, it has the disadvantage that it forces trains to stop and it'll release them in waves, which can create traffic jams, depending on how your network is set up. Now, the advantage uh, of this design is that it's super easy to add a timer to it. So all you need to do to convert this or to add a timer to this is just take one of those output tracks or build a fourth one and uh, put a train on it. Give that train a timetable and it will act as a timer. All right, so here we go. Now we have this train as a timer. And once it enters this block here, it'll release the two trains from those waiting bays. Now the cool thing about this is that even if these waiting bays aren't full, it still handles that case really nicely. So once this timer triggers again, it'll just wait here and stop. So it'll, uh, it'll still have that cycle ready to go. And then once two trains come, it'll still release them as soon as they appear. Now you may need to use some time, uh, use some waypoints and speed limits to make sure that the train doesn't go too slowly or too quickly through this system, but it's a relatively simple and easy to set up design. And it's easy to add more tracks. All you have to do is just keep adding on more inputs and outputs like so. So it's really easy to use design. So third, let's take a look at a design that does not block trains. So unlike the previous design, trains will be able to flow through freely. So the idea behind this design will be to use memories to keep track of which paths trains have gone down. So here I'm going to put some two-way entry signals and I'll build out a little bit like this. Um, and that'll be where the memories go. All right, so there we go. And if we let these trains go through, we'll see that one by one, the memories turn red and eventually the trains will just block themselves since the reset mechanism isn't there yet. So now the idea, once we are at this point, is that we can essentially build the previous design right on top of these memories. So once they're all red, we'll just turn them green again. So here we are, and we can see that trains will flow through and cycle between the three different routes. However, it doesn't actually work. It, it mostly works. However, the output isn't completely even. And that's because um, when the third train goes through, it only resets the other two tracks. Uh, the trains get to decide what order they go through these three paths, and they'll end up 
uh, not quite going through evenly because they don't like this path on top. So if I speed this up, we can see how uneven it is. So just looking at that, um, it looks like three trains could take the right two tracks for every one train that takes the left track. So we can fix this actually, um, and it'll actually simplify this design. So we know that trains will always prefer to take this leftmost path last. So rather than having the all three uh, memories trigger the NOT gate, we can just have this one path trigger the NOT gate and we don't even need a memory here. So we can just connect this up like so, get rid of this reset mechanism over here, and as well we can get rid of these signals, and just set it up like this. So a lot simpler now. Now, trains will first take the right two paths, and once the right two paths turn red, they'll take the leftmost path, which will reset the two right paths. Now this design is pretty good, and it's definitely used a lot in the, the real game, but it does depend a lot on pathfinding. So if for some reason, say the pathfinding changed, so now that the, the middle route was less desired, it would screw everything up since now trains would just take the right route and then the left route which would reset the right route and they'd never take the middle route. Now the next design will fix that and it'll be a design which doesn't let the trains pick which order they take the tracks in. It'll always be a fixed cycle. So that'll be the last design. Let's take a look. Here's the fourth design and I know it looks crazy but conceptually it's actually not that complicated. So on the left here in blue, we have a monostable circuit or edge detector. And what this does is it lets out a brief green signal whenever a train passes over here. Now hooked up to that, we have this four state train counter, uh, a four state counter. So zero, one, two, and three. And each time a train passes that advances the counter one position. Now on the red lines, we just have, uh, we're just reading out the four different states. So that'll just keep one of these signals green at all times. So as you can see, when this progresses and when this cycles, it from right to left will let each output track turn green. And once the train passes this point here, it'll turn the next signal green. Now it's a bit of a mess here just because of all the wires that you have to fit in but conceptually, hopefully that made sense. This design is expandable to any number of output tracks, though it isn't super straightforward to expand it since you have to basically redo the uh, counter over here. And you also have to be pretty careful about the length of the train, so you make sure that exactly one, uh, one slot is open at all times, but the concept is the same, so we can expand this to any number of output tracks. So that will bring us to the end of this episode, but here in the background I've expanded the design to 8 output tracks. A little bit tricky because you have to stagger the order that the trains take. But as we watch that, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below, and I'll see you next time.